today's class is going to be kind of a heart opening focused class. So there'll be a lot of back bends and chest openings at the end. And it's going to be based kind of off the rocket three um, style of yoga. So that style is based off an Ashtanga type of yoga, but we won't be doing it as kind of crazy as an Ashtanga style. So we'll be doing some hip openers and grounding balancing poses as well. Um, so as always, we might use some props. So if you have your blocks and your strap, if you don't have those things, don't worry. You can, I'll tell you how to do it without them as well. And maybe a cushion or a blanket might be nice as well. For some poses, you can roll a blanket up underneath you or at the end when we relax, it's nice maybe to have a blanket. So again, if anything feels uncomfortable for you, please back out or stop your body and you are your best teacher. You, you know what you can feel, I don't. So I'm just guiding you here. Please listen to your body and honor your body. Cool, so we've come on to our mats in an easy seat. And I'm gonna sit up on my blanket because I find it nice to have your hips higher up than your knees because it gives you an easier way to tilt your pelvis. So when we do heart openers and back bends, it works on opening the heart chakra. So I spoke about it a few weeks ago and our chakra, there are different energy centers in your body. So there are seven, we have the root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, the heart, throat, third eye and crown chakra. So the heart chakra literally connects the bottom three with the top three. So they say that love is what brings us all together. So when your heart is open, you're more receptive to be compassionate to others and universal love and just being connected with everyone. And when you have more love, self-love, then you can give away your love too. So the heart chakra is a nice one to work on. So come into your easy seat. Of course, you can sit with your feet like that or crossed, or if it's easier for you, you can also choose to go up on your knees like that, whatever is more comfy for you. Just bring your hands onto your knees and allow your eyes to close. We're just going to do a pranayama technique called Durga Pranayama, or three part breath. It's a good one to focus and center in, especially on the heart space at the beginning. So breathe in deeply through your nose and breathe out deeply through your nose. So filling up the lungs as much as you can. Inhaling and exhaling. A few more like that. Inhale in, fill up the belly and exhale. Feel it empty as your navel draws into your spine. One more. And exhale. So this time you can bring your hands onto your ribs and your collarbones. So when you breathe in, you want to feel your belly filling up and your ribs when you get to the top. So inhaling to the belly and then to the ribs. Inhale. Hold it for a minute at the top. And exhale, let it go. Again, like that, inhale through the belly and to the ribs. Hold. And exhaling first, the ribs fall in and then the belly. One more like that. Holding. Exhaling first from the ribs and then the belly. So this time you add on, you want to inhale to the belly, the ribs and the collarbones at the top. When you feel like your lungs are full, Try and draw it a tiny bit more in. Inhaling. 
hold it maybe even try and sip in an extra little bit and exhale from the collarbones to the ribs and lastly from the belly Couple more like that. Give it a tiny bit more. Hold it. And release from the top down to the bottom. Last one, inhaling. Holding. Exhaling back from the collarbones to the ribs and the belly and the navel draws into the spine. So you just notice how that feels in your heart and chest space. Does it feel a bit more open? Do you have a bit more awareness in that space? And when you think of your heart chakra, the color of it is green. So you can imagine a green light and a green energy in your heart space and when you breathe in it glows deeper like a bellows on a fire and when you exhale you can loving energy spreads out to your body so just meditate on that for a few seconds When our hearts are more open, we can be more receptive and we can share our love more easily with others. So gently allow your eyes to open if they were closed and remove, if you were sitting on something, remove it and we'll come onto our mat all fours first and then we'll go down to our puppy pose so your knees are under your hips you can bring your forearms out straight in front of you towards the front of the mat keeping the hips over the knees and lower the chest down as much as you can onto the mat if you're up here that's fine the aim is to try and get the armpits and the chest and the chin onto the mat that this is a strong chest opener so if you feel like you need to back out a little please do inhaling here exhaling if your chest and chin is on the mat play with lifting your palms up and down and just seeing how that changes the sensation So your armpits feel like they're rounding down closer to the mat. Inhaling and exhaling. If your palms were lifted, place them back down on the mat. And come up quickly onto your tabletop position. And take your right hand straight out so the knife edge of your palm is grounding down into the mat. So that same puppy pose in the shoulders and take your left arm under your left shoulder. If you want, you can tent onto your left fingers and take the left leg back out behind you, toes are tucked. Inhale here and exhale, stretching into your right arm and the shoulder. Exhale. Replace your left knee under your left hip, plant your left palm, and slide your right hand back under your right shoulder. And we'll switch. <clears throat> left hand goes out in front. Right arm hand is under your right shoulder. You're on the knife edge of your left palm, so your pinky finger is grounding into the mat. 
try and get the forearm down, stretching out that shoulder and armpit. And if this is enough, stay here, or you can lift the right leg and tuck the right toes, playing around, getting a deeper stretch. Inhaling and exhaling. You want to keep your hips square and your core engaged in this position. So you're not dumping into the low back, you're keeping it engaged. Inhale, we place the right knee and bring the left hand back under the left shoulder. And we're back in a tabletop position. Arms are straight, knees under hips. And so really ground into the palms of your hands. So imagine your uh, hands are like suction cups. You want to grip with your fingertips and the heels of your hands pressing into the mat. So from here, we'll take a couple of cat cow. Inhale, drop the belly, lift the tailbone, lift the chin and chest and look up. And exhale, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone, round the upper back, broaden the shoulders. Push the ground away. Cow, cat, cat, back, cat pose. Inhaling, drop the belly, drop the chest and look up. Tailbone is lifted. And exhale, tuck the chin, tuck the tailbone, round through the upper back, pushing the ground away. A few more like that at your own pace, inhaling to cow and exhaling, pushing the ground away for cat. Inhaling and exhaling. Try and move slowly and deliberately with your breath. You think your body and your spine is like a wave. Really feeling each movement and each vertebrae. Warming up the spine. Inhale it, cow, and exhale, cat. Coming back to a neutral position for our regular tabletop, so spine is straight. We'll rock backwards and forwards to warm up our wrists. So shift the weight over the fingertips and backwards behind the wrist. So inhaling forwards, exhaling backwards. I'm going to take it to the side, turn the fingertips to the sides of the mat. Rock from side to side, keeping the arms straight, pressing the ground away. If you need to turn your fingertips towards you. Take it back to the front. So from here, lower down onto your belly. And we'll take a sphinx pose. So your forearms are straight on the mat, elbows under the shoulders, hands are planted, fingertips grip the mat. Your feet are strong, so your pinky toes and all ten toes are trying to ground into the mat. Inhale, lift the chest up, broaden the collarbones, shoulder blades close together at the back, and look forward. If this is enough, stay here. If you want to, press into the palms and lift the elbows up for a deeper stretch. Inhale, exhale. If this is enough, you can stay here. If you want some more, Flex the feet and lift them towards your head and try and tilt your head 
back towards your feet. Inhaling here, exhaling. Inhale, exhale, lower the feet slowly with control and lower the elbows down and lower the head back down to the mat. Now slide your hands so they're under your shoulders. Same strong feet, toes are pressing into the mat. And inhale, press into the palms, keep the elbows tucked in by the ribs and lift the chest looking forward for our low cobra. Inhale here and exhale, take it back down. If that's enough for you and your shoulders, you can keep your hands under your shoulders. If you want a little more, you can take the hands under the elbows. And we'll take the same position. So elbows firm in by your ribs. Inhale, press into the palms, strong feet, looking forward. Cobra pose, Guyan Gassi. Imagine your hands are energetically moving towards your feet. And if you lift your hands from the mat, you should be able to hold the back bend. Inhale here, exhale lower. We repeat that, inhale, take it up. Hold it here if that's enough. If you want to challenge yourself, you can press into the pan and press the pelvis towards the mat and lift up for a full cobra. Inhaling and exhaling. You can keep a micro bend in the elbows and your collarbones are broad looking forward. If you want to come up into up dog from here, just lift the knee and the pelvis off the mat. Looking forward, broad collarbones, micro bend in the elbows, making sure there's no pain in the lower back. Inhale here, exhale, lower the knees and pelvis, and lower the chest back down to the mat. So from here, we push back up through our tabletop, tuck our toes and come up for a downward facing dog. Adam will push for that now. And in our down dog, our hands are shoulder width distance, index finger is pointing forward, fingers are spread, fingertips grip the mat. You've got that suction cup going on with your palms. Forearms firm in, shoulder width are wide. Side body is long, ribs and navel draw in, outer hips are up and back. If you need to keep a bend in your knees here, do so. If you can straighten the legs, take that option. And imagine your heels are grounding into the mat. If your heels are still up, no worries, just work on keeping your spine straight and long. You want to hide your heels from your view, so you might twist your ankles slightly out towards each corner of your mat so you can't see your heels. Not drastically like that, but just a little bit. Inhaling here, exhaling. So take any movements you want in your down dog. So you can straighten the left leg and bend the right knee to stretch out the left calf. Inhale here and exhale, switch it over, straighten the right leg, bend the left knee, feel that stretch in the right calf. Quickly check in with your neck here, nod your head yes, and shake your head no, just making sure there's no pain in the neck. On an inhale, come up onto the balls of your feet, your tiptoes, bend your knees, and look forward and walk to the top of the mat. Grab a hold of opposite elbows and just rock your body from side to side. In our forward fold, the weight is in the toes, the sit bones are over the heels. Imagining the crown of the head is heavy and reaching towards the mat. Your knees can be bent here. And imagine with each inhale, your vertebrae is getting longer. And with each exhale, 
crown of your head and reaching closer to the mat. Inhale here and exhale, release the arms, tuck the chin, keep a micro bend in the knees and slowly vertebra for vertebra roll up to standing, letting your head be the last thing that comes up. So here is our Tadasana or mountain pose, or in Ashtanga rocket, they call it Samastiti, which means equal standing, which is the same pose, just a different name. Traditionally, your big toes will tuck in your a little space between your ankles. Or if you're more, if you're tighter in your hamstrings, you can keep your feet at hips width distance, your choice. So grounding into all four corners of the feet, big toes are strong and pinky toes. Lift your 10 toes and see if you can slowly put them back down one by one into the mat. Really hard. <laughs> so grounding into the toes, your quads are engaged, so lift the kneecaps. Tuck the tailbone so you have a posterior tilt. So imagine your Hips is trying to reach towards your ribs. Shoulders are wide, so broaden the collarbones and shoulder blades are rolling down the back. Looking forward, inhale, sweep the arms out and up overhead. Look up at your thumbs. And exhale, hinge from the hips, fall forward, Uttanasana. Weight is in the toes, sit bones over heels. Inhale, halfway lift, back is flat. You can bring your hands to your shins if you need to. And exhale, plant the hands on the mat, step it back for a high plank. So in high plank, your heels are over your toes, arms are straight, fingertips grip the mat. You want to work on that posterior tilt in the pelvis, so not keeping your bum out, but tucking it under. Draw the navel into the spine. Inhale here and exhale, bring the knees, chest and chin down to the mat, elbows hug into the ribs. Shifted forward for our cobra pose. And exhale, come back to your tabletop, tuck the toe, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Deep inhale here, exhale it out through the mat. Inhale here, and exhale to side. Inhale, come up onto the balls of your feet. Look forward and walk to the top of your mat. Or if you want, you can try jumping forward. If you jump, try and land quietly and softly, inhaling up to halfway lift. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands back to heart center. That's our Surya Namaskar A, so in Salutation A. We'll do one more like that. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up, looking up. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands and step it back for high plank. Taking your option of Vinyasa, knees, chest, chin. If you want to shake chaturanga, you can start from our high plank. Inhale, shift the weight over the fingertips. Exhale, bend the elbows 90 degrees, keeping the elbows in by the ribs. Lower it down. Inhale, roll over the toes, upward facing dog. And exhale, tuck the toes, tuck the chin, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale here. So you have the choice of those two options for our vinyasas, knee, chest, chin, cobra, or chaturanga up dog. Your choice, you can skip vinyasas when you want to as well. Totally up to you. Inhale, come up onto the balls of the feet. Bring your feet together. Exhale, bend your knees, look forward, and travel to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. 
inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. And exhale, hands back to heart center. Do one more. Inhale, sweep the arms up and up. Looking up. Exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands. If you're taking chaturanga and you want to jump, try jumping back. You land in chaturanga with your elbows bent. This is quite challenging, so there's no shame in stepping back. Yeah. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Micro bend in the elbows, broaden the collarbones. Exhale, hips up and back. And now it's a chance to reset. You get your breath again. Inhaling, exhale, please. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, come up onto the balls of the feet. Bend the knees. Travel to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up overhead. Exhale, hands back to heart center. Now for our Surya Namaskar B, we'll start in a chair pose. So inhale, sweep the arms up, but bend the knees for our chair. So in chair pose, your shins are straight. Your hips are like you're sitting in an imaginary chair. <laughs> arms are up overhead. They can be out like a Y. It can be directly over your shoulders or your palms can come to touch, depending on how it feels in your shoulder. Inhale here and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the hands, take it back. I plank, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga up dog of choice. Inhale. And exhale back. On an inhale, turn your left foot 45 degrees, making sure it's on the left side of the mat. Sweep your right foot up and back and bring it forward to replace your right hand. Bend into the front knee 90 degrees and sweep your arms up overhead for warrior one. Inhale in here, exhale. Inhale and exhale, bring your arms out like a cactus. And make it a slight back bend for the heart opening. Inhaling here, exhale. Inhale, exhale, plant the hands to frame the front foot and take it back for your vinyasa. So knees, chest, chin, or chattering the up dog. Inhale, inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. We'll do that again on the left side. Inhale, turn the right foot 45 degrees. Sweep the left foot up and back. Replace the right, the left wrist with your left hand foot. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Clear the gas in the one. And exhale, take the arms out to the cactus shape. Inhale here. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, plant the hands to frame the front foot and step it back for your vinyasa. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale, back to downward facing dog. Take a moment here to reconnect with your breath. Inhale and deepen. And exhale, side up and up. Inhale, exhale. On an inhale, you can just walk your hands to back to your feet, or if you want to try a little challenge, challenging transition, from your down dog, just walk your hands in a little, lean forward and press into your elbows, swoosh, your hands back to meet your feet. 
from here we're in a forward fold. So if you need to bend your knees, do so. If you can keep your knee, your leg straight, do that. So take the peace fingers, your peace fingers, and hook them around your toes for our padahasana and bhustasana. So inhale to lengthen the body and exhale, bend at the elbows to fold more deeply. Outer hips are up and back. With each inhale, you add length and space between each vertebrae. And with each exhale, you're folding deeper. Imagining the crown of the head reaching down to the mat. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to fold. Keeping your ribs and your navel drawn in. On an inhale, come up halfway and slide your hand under your feet. If this is very awkward for you, you can just hold on to the backs of your ankles like this. Keeping your bend in your knees if you need to. If you want to try Hastasana or Gorilla Pose, you stand basically on the palms of your hands. So the palms of your hands are in contact with the soles of your feet. Inhale here. Exhale, bend at the elbows, fold forward. Ribs and navel draw in. Imagining length in between each vertebrae as the crown of the head reaches down to the ground. If your hands are under your feet, it can feel nicer to lift one heel and then the other, or play around with wiggling your toes into the heels of your hands, like a little massage for your hands. be nice especially after those few vinyasas where we spent a lot of time on our hands. On an inhale release the hands from under the feet or from behind the ankle and bring grab each opposite elbow for a rag dog letting the head hang heavy. Imagining crown of the head just gravity pulling it down towards the mat. You can do a little neck check here and nod the head yet and shake it. No, should feel really nice. Inhale here, exhale, release the hands to the mat and tuck the chin. Keep a micro bend in your knees and slowly roll up to standing. Keeping your chin tucked is the last thing to come up. So from here, come up on to your tippy toes and we're going to travel to the top of the mat. If your balance is with you, you can stay on your tippy toes. If it's too hard, you can just walk to the top of your mat. So sweep the arms up and over, up onto the balls of your feet. And on an inhale, shift the weight into your right foot and step the left foot out in front. And same for the next step, shift the weight into the left foot and slowly step the right foot out in front. Challenging your balance, inhale, exhale until you reach the top of your mat. So from here, step out with Either your left or your right foot. Traditionally, it should be the left foot, but I'm gonna cheat and go with my right foot so you're still able to see me. So whichever way is best for you to see your screen. Step out with our feet wide. So your side edges of your feet are in line with the side edges of your mat. Your toes are slightly turned in. Inhale, sweep the arms out to a T. And exhale, fold forward. So if you need to keep your hands at your hips, feel free to do so. If staying halfway is not for you, do that. Or if you can go for, further down, exhale, fold deeper. 
you want to bring your hands to your mat so your fingertips are in line with your toes. Inhaling and exhaling, going deeper. If this is a challenge, you can, of course, use your blocks out in front under your shoulders and just get the same stretch in the backs of your legs this way. So you do what feels best for you. Inhaling here, exhaling. Use your hand to press into the mat and make the fold a little deeper. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, bring your hands back to your hips and exhale, come up halfway. Inhale, come up all the way. Turn your heels in so your toes are pointing out to the edge of your mat and take bending the knees, take the arms out 90 degrees for our goddess pose. Inhale in here, exhale, trying to get the tailbone deeper into the mat. Elbows are 90 degrees, knees trying to be 90 degrees too. Inhale here, exhale. Inhale, straighten the legs, straighten the arms. Take the hands back to the hips. Turn the toes back in. Inhale in here, exhale, fold forward again. Keep the hands staying on the hips this time. For Prasarita Padachanasana B. Inhale here. Exhale. Taking your option if you need to be on your blocks, if you need to stay halfway. You do you. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale, come up halfway, and exhale, come up all the way. We turn our heels in and our toes out again for that goddess pose. This time, keep the hands on the knees. We inhale, try and keep the spine straight. Exhale, try and go deeper into the squat. Inhale in here, exhale, lower. Hard on the inner thighs. Inhale here and exhale, straighten the legs, straighten the arms. And we'll take it back to our pigeon toe feet, so the toes slightly turned in. And clasp the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers. And fold forward the same way, letting the hands drape behind the head, almost like your hands are weighing your head down. Inhale here, exhale. Inhaling the length between each vertebrae and exhaling, falling a little deeper. Inhale to come up halfway. You can bring the hands down to the sacrum or the lower back. And exhale to come up all the way. We'll turn our heels in again for our goddess pose. Inhale, bring the arms out and bend the knees 90 degrees. Trying to keep your knees over your ankles as much as you can. Inhale here. Exhale, bring the hands to the knees. And on an inhale, turn your left shoulder in and press into your right arm to twist, looking over your right shoulder. Inhale back to center and do that on the other side. So press into the right knee, right hand, and twist, look over the left shoulder. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, come back to center and exhale, straighten the legs. And our last prasarita D, turn our toes back in. Hands come to the hips and exhale, fold forward. 
If you can, use your peace fingers to grab your big toes and use your strength to kind of pull yourself a little further into the fold. Not too hard, just a little pull. Inhale in here and exhale. Do a nice stretch in your inner thighs, kind of groin area, and the hamstrings. As always, if you feel anything, back out. Inhale, come up halfway, hands can come back to the hips, and the exhale, come up all the way. Turning your feet back out for our final goddess pose, bending at the knees. Arms come out 90 degrees, cactus arms, inhale here, exhale lower. Inhale, try and lift the right heel up so you're on the ball of your right toes. And exhale, face it back down. Inhale, do the same on the opposite side. Exhale, face it back down. And for an added challenge, why not try and do the two at one time? Inhale. And exhale, lower it down. Whew. Straighten the knees, straighten the arms. And exhale, arms back to your side. Turn your back left foot. Your back left foot to the left side of the mat. And your right foot to the front side of the mat. And lower it down. Lower the back knee down to the mat. Keep a nice degree bend in the front knee, knee over ankle. For Anjali Asana, inhale, sweep the arms up and over. And exhale, take it into the cactus style to open the heart and open the chest. Inhale in here. Exhale. If you feel that along your left hip flexor. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, clasp the hands on either side of the left, right foot and straighten your right leg, coming back for half splits, Ardha Hanumanasana. So making sure your left hip is over your left knee, front foot is flexed. You might even need to scoop that left, right foot forward a little bit to keep the alignment over the left side. Inhale here and exhale, fold over the left leg. You can, of course, use your blocks if that's enough to just stay up here. Inhaling and exhaling. Be strong, stretching your calf and your hamstring. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, plant the front foot down, bring the foot and take it back. For Vinyasa, your choice of knees, chest, chin, cobra, or chaturanga, up dog. Inhale up. And exhale back to down dog. Inhale here. Exhale, side it out. Inhale, sweep the left leg up and back. And exhale, bring it forward, place it between the hands, lower the right knee down to the mat. Untuck the toes, nice degree bend in your left knee. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, take them out to the cactus, down in the back bend. Inhale in here. And exhale, bring the left foot. Come to straighten the left leg. You might need to slide it out a little to keep your right hip over your right knee. Flex that foot. Inhale here. You can, of course, use your blocks for support. And exhale, folding over the left leg. For Arda Hanumanasana, our half splits. Inhale, plant the left foot down. Frame that foot with your hands. And Tuck the back toes, 
take the left foot back to meet the right for a high plank, then take your vinyasa or skip it and go straight to down dog, your choice. Inhale, exhale, inhale, yukta, or cobra, and exhale, back to downward facing dog. Inhale here, exhale, let it go. Inhale, bring the toes to touch, come up onto the ball of the feet, bend the knees, and travel to the top of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweep the arms up and out. And exhale, hands back to heart center. So from here, bring your left hand to your left hip. And if it's available to you, grab your left, right big toe with your rice peaks fingers and bring your right foot out straight in front. If it's not available to you, you can just bring your knee up. Ground into all four corners of the standing left foot. The left foot is strong. The left quad is engaged by lifting the kneecap and that left glute is engaged. If you have your toe, take it out to the side or your knee your option and as an extra challenge if you have your balance you can try looking to the left bring that arm out too inhale take it back to the center exhale release your foot but keep it off by itself much more challenging when your hand is not doing the work <laughs> exhale take it back if you need to roll out your foot, we'll try tree pose. So bring your right foot in to your right thigh. So if you don't put it on the knee, so either below the knee or above the knee, whichever is available to you, and press that foot into the thigh and thigh back into the foot. This is a hard balance pose. You can bring your hands to heart center. You can take Ia Mudra and take your hands out to each side. You can take the hands up and overhead, whichever balance is best for you. If you have your balance, try sweeping the left arm up and over and tilt your hips to the left without falling. So, Really imagining like you're a tree, your roots are grounding down, grounding down into the mat, keeping you standing tall and upright. Do you want your knee that's bent in the tree pose kind of be pressing back towards the back behind you and your hips stay square? That will help keep your balance. From here, if you can, without dropping your foot, reach back, left hand comes to left hip, and grab a hold of your right foot for a dancer's pose. So take that foot and pull it into your glute. If that's enough for you here, stay here, just balancing on one leg. If you want some more, take your right hand out, or the left hand out in front of you, focus on a point in front of you, and kick your right foot into your right hand, lifting your chest and your feet towards the sky. Inhaling here, and exhale, take it back. So after that, all that, you might want to roll out your left foot. You did a lot of work on the left foot. Might feel a burn in the left calf. So we'll take that out onto the left side. So inhale, right hand comes to right hip, taking in your knee into the chest and taking it out. Or if you have flexibility, you can grab your big toe, take it out in front. Inhaling here, 
exhaling. Inhale, take it out to the side. Look to the right for the extra challenge if you have your balance. Inhale, take it back to the front. Release the leg, but try and keep it up. <laughs> Inhale here, exhale, take it down, shake out that leg. <laughs> we'll take the tree pose on this side. So bring your left, right, left pat, sole of your foot into your right thigh. Sometimes it's easier to come off your mat for these balancing postures because the mat is quite squishy. And for balance, you kind of need something firm. So inhaling, press the left foot into the right thigh, right thigh presses back. Hips are squared, shoulders are squared. Inhale, take the arms up overhead if your balance is with you. For an extra challenge, look up. For an extra challenge, bring that left hand down to the left knee. Lean over to the left. Come back to center. If you can, without dropping that foot, take your dancer's pose without putting the foot down. Just hop around so you can see me. Inhaling it up. And exhale, leaning a little forward, kicking the foot into the hand. <laughs> kicking that foot into the hand as you lift chest and the foot towards the sky. You can keep a micro bend in your standing leg. And sometimes if you have a wall or something to balance on in front of you, it can be helpful just to really get deeper into the back bend so you're not stressing about falling over. Inhaling here. And exhale, release. Shake out the right leg. Do a lot of work on that side. And from the top of your mat, you just lower down into a seated position. Or Dandasana staff pose. So in this pose, your sit bones are grounding into the mat. You might need to move any flesh around the sit bones. Feet are flexed, and your hands are under the shoulders, sitting straight like a staff. Inhale here, exhale. If your hands, if your arms are shorter, some people's different proportion are different, it might make it easier to sit on the blocks with your hands or not. If it raises up your shoulders, then your arms are long enough. Inhale here. From here, sweep the arms up and exhale, fold over the legs, reaching for the big toes if you can. If you're here, that's fine. Just work on folding forward. If you need to use a strap to help get there, you can hook it around your feet and help yourself forward. Inhaling, lengthen space, and exhaling, going deeper. So by holding these poses for a little longer and breathing through them, you're telling your body that it's okay. So that then the next time your body is familiar with it and you maybe can go a little deeper each time. Inhale here, exhale, tuck the chin more or up to sitting. So take your hands behind your back, hands come onto the mat, facing the fingertips face towards your bum. And if you can come up, plant the feet and come up into a reverse tabletop position. Strong, straight core, strong feet, strong arms. If you want to challenge yourself more, you can make it a reverse plank by straightening the feet, the legs, and keeping the feet grounded into the mat. 
you want more of a challenge, you can lift one leg and then the other. Really hard. You can drop the head and the back. Inhale here and exhale. Bring the bum back down onto the mat. So from here, bring your left foot into your inner right thigh. The knee is out to the side. If your knee is floating off the mat, you might want to put a block or a cushion or a rolled up blanket underneath it just to make it a little more comfy. Inhale, the arms come up and exhale, fold over the right leg, the Janu Shirshasana. Head to knee pose. Imagining your chin is reaching for your shin. You should feel a nice stretch in the left low back. If you feel any pain, back off. Inhaling here. Exhale, come up. And we'll switch sides so the left leg is out straight and the right sole of the foot is pressing into the left thigh. You can take your prop over to under the right knee. Inhale, arms come up and exhale, reach for the foot. Of course, you can just have your hands on either side of your left leg or you could use your strap. Inhale here. Inhale, come up, move your prop, and exhale, swing your left foot back behind you, and we'll take it down onto our belly. So your palms are by your hips facing upwards, your forehead is on the mat. And on an inhale, lift your Feet and your head off the mat. Big toes are touching. Inhale here. And exhale, lower down. This time, interlace your hands behind your back. If the heels of your hands can touch, good. If you're just catching the fingers, that's fine too. Inhale, lift the head and the feet up. For a locust, Shalavasya. Inhale. And exhale, lower down. Can feel nice to rock your hips a little from side to side after that. And inhale, come up onto your forearms. Take your left arm and turn your fingers towards the right edge corner of your mat. So your arm is diagonal in front of you. And take your right foot and lift it up behind you. Reach back with your right hand, catch your right foot and pull it in towards your glute. Inhaling and exhaling. Inhale, let it go. Exhale, pull it in a little bit more. Inhale, release the foot slowly with control and we'll switch that so your right arm is diagonal towards the left corner of your mat. Your left foot comes up, reach back with the left hand, catch the foot, inhale and exhale, pull it in towards the glute. Inhaling to release a little and exhaling to push a little bit more. Stretching through your quads. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, release slowly with control. And exhale, bring the forehead down to the mat. So bring both heels in towards the glute, flex the feet, and reach back with the arms and grab your ankles. So you can, first time we'll keep the knees down and only lift the head. Inhaling up the chest and head comes up, quads and knees are still on the mat. And exhale. Lower it down. 
The second time we'll keep our head down and just lift our quads and knees up. So inhale, lift the legs. Exhale, we'll lower them down. So on the third time, we'll lift both head and knees at the same time. Inhale, lift them up. Exhale, hold it. Inhale, exhale. So you can really feel the power of your breath in this pose as you inhale deeply. You feel your bow is rocking. And exhale, you can rock forward. So play around with that a little if you can. Inhale, exhale, release the knees and the head back down on the mat. Make a little pillow for your forehead with your hands and rock your hips from side to side. So we'll try that again, but this time with an active stretch. So rather than actually grabbing your hat, feet and pulling them in, see what it feels like to lift the feet and flex them, but reach back with your hands. So don't help yourself, just try and hold it. So this is like an active stretch versus when, you, when you're holding your feet and pulling with your body, it's more passive. But it takes more strength to actually hold it on your own. Inhaling and exhale, release. Chin you at the hips. Inhale, press into the palms and come up onto your knees. Those knees or hips width distance apart. You're going to do a camel pose or ustrasana. So you can bring your hands to your lower back, either pointing the fingers down or up, it's up to you. Fingers up is a bit more traditional, but you do what feels best in your body. So you can imagine in this pose that you had some, someone hooked your thumbs under your armpits and is trying to lift your chest up towards the ceiling. So it's not really a back bend that you're just going back if your chest is lifting and opening. So inhale here, and exhale, just feel what it's like to just lean back and hold. Inhale, take it back up. That's quite challenging. So don't worry if you didn't lean too far. So you can play around with either your toes tucked in this position or untucked. Tucked is maybe a little easier to reach and untucked Depends how it feels for you. I prefer untucked. So keeping your hands at your lower back, inhale, look up at the ceiling, lift the chest, and exhale, lean back. And when you can see the wall behind you, then take your hands down to your feet. Inhaling here, lift the chest up, and exhale, hold it. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, take the hands back to the lower back to protect it. And exhale, tuck the chin, come up. And slowly sit down onto your heels. Bring your palms onto your thighs, close your eyes and just let that settle. So back bends are strong energetic poses. Sometimes they can make your heart race. It's totally normal. Sometimes maybe you see little stars when you come out of it again. It's kind of normal, but you don't want to push it too far. So you know your limits back out at any time if you're feeling any pain anywhere. We'll take it up for one last camel. Inhale, come back onto your knees. Take the hands to the lower back. Open the shoulders, lift the chest. Inhale, look up. Exhale, lean back. Take the hands to the feet. Inhaling here. Exhale. The head can drop back if that's comfortable for you. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale, bring the hands back to the low back. Exhale, roll up and sit back down onto the heels. Take a minute to let that settle. So swing your legs around to the front, either left or right, your choice. So the feet are out in front, soles of the feet pressing into the mat, and lower it back down onto your back. So plant the soles of the feet strongly into your mat, ground down. So you don't want your feet twisting to the side or in. You're Feet are straight, toes pointing towards the top of the mat. Knees pointing up towards the ceiling. Knees are straight so they're not knocking in or knocking out, but over your ankles. So make sure you can touch your feet with your hands just a little. And inhale, lift your hips and pelvis up. So you're in one straight line. And keep your palms flat on the mat underneath you. Inhale in here, strong feet. And exhale, lower it down. You'll do one more like that. Inhale up. And this time, shimmy your shoulders under your upper body and interlace your hands under your hips. Bridge pose. Set your bandhasana. Inhale in here. Exhaling. Lift the hips, lift the pelvis higher towards the ceiling. Strong feet. Strong knees. They're not knocking in or out. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. After all that, if you have a block, it might be nice to do the same pose, lifting the hips, but using your block underneath your lower back to take the weight and just enjoying the benefits of the posture without the effort. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, lift your hips and remove your block. If you want to try wheel pose or urdhva dhanurasana, bring your hands underneath your shoulders so your elbows are pointing up towards the ceiling and your fingers are turned slightly towards the sides of your mat. And from your bridge position, your hips are lifted. Press into the palms of your hands on an inhale. Come up onto the top of your head and stay here for a little minute, making sure that your elbows are firmed in and pointed towards the ceiling. Inhale here, exhale, press into your feet and hands and come up for wheel pose. Inhale, exhale. If you feel any pain in your lower back, back out of the position. Inhale. You're imagining pushing your chest through the gateway of your arms, trying to get your arms straight. You can play around with lifting your heels if you want, or walking your feet in or out. It's up to you, or you can just hold it. Inhale in here, exhale, tuck the chin, bend the knees and lower the shoulders, and then vertebra for vertebra, slowly down onto the mat. So after this position, some people like to hug the knees into the chest or each knee knocking on one another or take Suptavadakanasana or butterfly where the soles of the feet come together and the knees knock out. So you choose which one your body is telling you it feels like.
Maybe you want to do all three. Your choice. So from here, slowly come up to seated and bend your right knee so your foot is in your shin is in line with the top of the mat or turned in towards your view and take your left foot back behind you for a reclining pigeon pose so your back foot is straight the ankle isn't sickling in and out front foot is flexed your right knee is outside your right hip now here if your right hip isn't coming down onto the mat, you can tuck a blanket underneath that to make it a little more comfy. Inhale here. Also, if you tuck your back toes and lift that knee, you can help with getting down lower onto the mat. Inhaling here. Exhaling. If you want to play with the back bend in this position, you can lift the back foot and reach back with your left hand and try and pull that foot in. So if you're able to hold it, you might be able to hook it in to your elbow and take a mermaid pose where your right hand comes up and over and hooks in with the left. Breathing through it, if that seems crazy, you can use your strap to help create the, the feeling of what you need to get there so you can help pull your foot in a little if you don't have it then you can walk slowly walk your hands on your strap eventually trying to get full king, full king pigeon pose which is basically this but your hands are actually holding your feet. <laughs> Inhaling here and exhale, let go of that foot if you have it, and slowly with control put it back down onto the mat. Try not to let it slingshot, always be gentle and careful with the step. Inhale here, look forward, square off the shoulders, square off the hips, and exhale, take it down onto your forearms. If that's enough, stay here. If you want more, you can walk your hands out further in front of you and take the forehead down onto the mat. These are a strong hip opener in this pigeon pose. Sometimes we can release a lot of emotions. We store our emotions in our hips. So this thing. Sometimes you might feel kind of overwhelmed in this position, and that's okay, it's normal. Just notice whatever comes up, whatever comes into your mind. Breathing through, you notice that our mind and our body and our breath are all connected. Inhale, bring the hands back under the shoulders and exhale. Come up to straight, switch it around from the other side to the left foot is in front and the right foot goes back. Taking the time to set it up. So your left knee is outside your left hip to protect your knee. Your left foot is either flexed or pointed. 
if you need to tuck something under your hip, do so. First, tuck the toes and lift the leg back so you can get deeper down onto your mat. And then here, exhaling. If you want to play with the back bend, you can bring the back foot up. Catch it if you have it, or use your strap. And pull it into the glute. Trying to eventually make contact. Noticing how it feels in one side versus the other. We all have one side that's stronger or more flexible. That's okay, it's normal. Let it go slowly with control. Inhale to straighten up and exhale to take it down onto the forearms or further out. Inhaling. Exhaling. Noticing the things you did and the things you didn't do. Doesn't matter. Just a yoga pose. The moment is gone. There's sometimes it's easy to love ourselves when we do good and when we succeed. It's how you love yourself when you don't do those things or how you talk to yourself. Always be kind to yourself. No judgment. Inhale, take the hands on the shoulders, slowly come up, and exhale, swing the left, the leg, or the right leg back to the front. And from here, just simply take one more forward fold. If you want to move your flesh, if you need to, grab the sit bones into the mat. Inhale, sweep the arms up, and exhale, fold forward. You can use your strap, you can just stay here. Bring the forehead down to the shin. If that's available for you, just rounding the back, letting go. You feel nice after those back bends. Counter pose. Inhale, slowly come up halfway and exhale, come up all the way. From here, you can do a quick little boat pose. So put your soles on the mat and the knees are bent. From here, you can lift your legs up and hold them if you need to. Toes are pointed. If it's available to you, bring the hands out straight in front and hold it. If you can, straighten the legs, okay with that. If you need to keep the knees bent, please do. Inhale, chest lifts up to the ceiling. And exhale, take it down, slowly down to the mat. Pulverings just above, feet are off the mat, shoulders are off the mat, or half full. Inhale, take it back up to Navasana. Exhale, take it back down. Inhale, one more like that. And exhale, lower it all the way down to the mat. Inhale, bring the knees into the chest. Exhale, release the left leg down to the mat. 
grab the right knee with your left hand and bring it over to the left side of the mat. Right arm is out to the right and look to the right. Trying to ground that knee, but also trying to keep your shoulder grounded onto the mat, your right shoulder. If you need to tuck something under that knee, go ahead and do so. Inhale, lift. Inhale, take it back to center, hug both knees into the chest. And exhale, right leg goes out straight. Left knee comes over to the right. You might have to shimmy the hips a little. Left arm out to the left and look to the left. Inhale and exhale. Enjoy the twist. Inhale, take it back to center. Hug both knees into the chest. Lift the head up to meet the knees. Curl everything up into a ball. Squeeze everything as tight as you can. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Make a fist. Squeeze your toes. Squeeze your face. Inhale. Exhale, release it out, push it up to Feet are out wide on either side of your mat. Arms are out wide, palms facing up. Close the eyes. Take any little movement you need to be comfortable. If you want to cover yourself with a blanket, feel free to do so. Let go of control over the breath. Let go of everything that just happened. Just completely relax. Just relax the space between your eyebrows. Relax all the muscles in your face. Tongue, lips. Feel gravity as you melt into your mat. Shoulder blades draw down. Chest relaxes. Stomach, hips, ribs. Your arms and legs, fingers and toes, completely relax. Relax your mind as well. Let go of any thoughts or anything. And just be here and there and aging all the juicy goodness of everything that just did.
slowly start to bring your awareness back to your body. Back to your breath. Making small movements with your fingers and toes. Wrists and ankles. Bring your feet together to touch. And just bring your arms up overhead, flicking your thumbs. Take a big morning stretch. Exhale, let go. Inhale, roll over onto your right side. Make a little pillow with your right arm. Curl your knees into your chest in the fetal position. Taking a moment here. Preparing to you to enter the world of the exist. Press into your left hand and come up into your leaning seat, keeping your eyes closed. Taking a moment. So notice how you feel now compared to the beginning of class. What has shifted, what has changed? After all these heart openers and back bends, your heart should feel more open. And when our heart is open, we have more light and we can share that light. And when we share our light, we reflect the light of others. Bring your hands to prayer, heart center. Take them up to the space between your eyes. Inhale here and bow down to the ground. Come back up. Bring your hands back to the head. Thank you so much for letting me guide you through your practice today. The light in me honors and recognizes the light in each and every one of you. Namaste.